Greetings, everybody. I am Millipede Struts, and welcome to Wolfinia. This is episode 253 of my Minecraft survival series, and we begin today's episode over here at the Eclipse Outpost. Don't worry, we're not actually doing anything over here at the Eclipse Outpost today. I was just here in between episodes doing a little bit of mending, and while I was doing that, we hit a little bit of a milestone. Hey, there we go. Check that out. One under levels. Cue the fanfare. Woohoo. Woohoo, indeed. Exciting times, right? I know I sounded super excited. Uh, but we got some stuff we need to do today. We need to get a move on. So I bid you adieu, good sir. And we are headed back to Wolfinia. And, you know, I suppose this will probably be a good point to tell you guys what we're going to be doing today. Because I'm sure you're curious about what we're going to be getting into today in Wolfinia. I am also curious about what we're going to be getting into today in Wolfinia. I don't have a plan as of yet. I just wanted to start filming the episode. So, I'm going to go ahead and go back there. I'm going to come up with some plans. And then, once I do that, I'll tell you guys the plans. And then, we'll actually start today's episode. All right. I have a plan. So as we discussed, we're going to be working on our storage system today. Last episode, we got our item input all set up and functional. We have our shulker box and loader, which is now working. We also have a manual item input in the back here. Now, once we do put items into our storage system through this thing, those items can then go one of two different ways. If they are stackable items, they will flow this way to our stackable storage. Or if they are not stackable items, they will be diverted this way to our non-stackable item storage. Now, last episode, I said our next step in the storage system would probably be to start working on this stuff right here. Turns out that's not the case. I think a better choice would be to ah, learn how to climb and then uh, begin work on our non-stackable item storage. Because there's actually not a whole lot that needs to be done to the actual storage over here. If we work fairly quickly, we can probably wrap this up and move on to something else. So first things first, we need to fix all our chests. Now, because I can't let good enough be good enough, I'm thinking I might want to make some changes to this. And among those changes are going to be indicator lights, because rather than having the hoppers up front here allowing us easy access to our items, I think I would much rather know which uh, chests actually have items in them versus which ones don't, right? So I think what we're going to do is uh, add a little bit of unnecessary redstone to this thing. Now, I don't need a perfect indicator light system here. Like, I just need a rough estimate, right? I don't need to know when each and every chest fills up. I'm thinking maybe every other chest is good enough. For instance, when we get items in this chest, this chest, or this chest, we'll have the lights come on and let us know. Um, and the reason why I want to do it that way is because I do need to keep the redstone here fairly compact because we don't have a whole lot of room in the back here to work with. So I'm thinking something like this would probably get the job done. Basically, once we have items back up into this hopper, that means these chests right here are full and the lights turn on letting us know those chests are full. And this is something that we can easily stack up one on top of the other and it's something that does in fact meet my space requirements. And because of the way our storage system fills up, we won't have any of our signals interfering with each other. That's not right. This has to go down a little bit right here. Yeah, and the reason why we have two repeaters here is because I don't want to inadvertently lock any of these hoppers. So this kind of makes sure we don't do that and makes it a little bit more me proof. And to eliminate any issues with lighting, let's go ahead and just get these jack-o'-lanterns in here. Because dang it, I didn't harvest all these jack-o'-lanterns for no reason. Maybe, maybe a few more jack-o'-lanterns. You can never have enough jack-o'-lanterns, right? I'm thinking I like that. We'll have a couple more jack-o'-lanterns thrown in here and make sure we have enough lighting. Because you can never have enough lighting. But I think I know what I want to do here redstone-wise now. We are going to have to work on our item transportation to this thing a little bit. Um, and because this fills up going this way, we don't have to worry about the comparators giving us any false indicator lights in any of the modules that don't have items in them. Um, so in case any of y'all are worried about that, y'all need to worry about that. 
Another thing we're going to need to do is get our item streams in from the OW, from the uh, dropper right here where our non-stackable items go over to the storage system. And another thing we might want to consider is the structure that's going to house all of this stuff. That might be something we touch on as well. So at this point, I think I'm ready. Let's go ahead and call the drone on over here, put on a little bit of music and get to work. Welcome back everybody. At this point, we have our first storage building over here in the Waterside District now complete. The non-stackable storage building is 100% done, at least I think it is. If it's not, we can always come over here and make whatever adjustments are needed. Uh, we'll test this whole thing out in just a minute, but first I want to show you the structure here. Now I did have to move the structure forward one block, so that way we had some room around the back here. I also had to consider our other storage buildings, what they're going to look like, because uh, we want them to at least be cohesive with one another, because the Waterside District needs to feel unified, right? But I am actually pretty happy with how this looks. Now currently, this thing stands empty because we have to not only be happy with how it looks, but also how it functions. 
So I have a bunch of items here, a lot of them non-stackable, that are going to be fed through the storage system into this thing. That way we can test it, make sure we're all good here before we move on to anything else. We also have all this stuff that we gathered the last time we went to the end cities, which has plenty of non-stackables that we can throw in there as well. So boop, boop, and boop. Ow. All right, so we can see the items getting separated. We have our non-stackables going that way. We have our stackable items going that way. That is perfect. All right, let's go ahead and see how the non-stackables are getting put away and make sure everything is working properly over here. So uh, first things first, you can see we do have an indicator up here at the top. So we know when this thing is active, when items are actually passing through the system, which they should be right now. There goes one, there goes an item. So you see the lights turn on whenever an item passes through here. Uh, we do this by taking a reading from our, one of our first hoppers here that sends a signal over all these redstone lamps, just letting us know, hey, we're active, we're doing stuff. Let me go ahead and empty my pockets here because this stuff's supposed to go in the storage system and not into my inventory. But as far as other redstone here goes, I've added an uh, indicator letting us know when our system is full. So once the storage chests fill up, items will back up into the hoppers. Once they back up into this row of hoppers, the top row, they will flow into this barrel, which will drop this piston, creating an observer clock, which will give us an audible indication that our storage system is full and needs to be addressed, obviously. I like my indicators almost as much as I like picking up stuff I'm not supposed to pick up. But the observer clock activates this bell, which makes a very loud sound, which continues forever, or at least until we address the issues with the backup in our storage system. So basically, once I start hearing this, I'll know I need to do something. Now, because I did not put in enough stackable items to fill up two full double chests and then some, uh, we didn't get to see our indicator lights working, but that is something I want to test out. So I'm going to go ahead and find some more stuff. Saddles will work. Saddles will work. We brought over a bunch of saddles and a bunch of other stuff from the Eclipse Outpost a while back. Now I'm not planning on keeping those in the non-stackable item storage system. I have somewhere else in mind for those, but we can easily use them for this test just to make sure indicator lights are working as I want them to work. So we'll go ahead and unload those into the system. Again, we have our indicator lights letting us know the shulker box is emptying. The shulker box is now empty. Indicator light is off. All the other indicator lights are off, which means all the other shulker boxes are empty, which means we can pull this switch and get all of our shulker boxes back. We do have an audible indicator letting us know that the shulker boxes are making their way over here. And now they should all be in here. Perfect. So we get all of our shulker boxes back plus some free stairs, which is great. You know, I've, I've said this before. I love getting free stuff from this. I'm very careless with uh, what I let fall into my system. But you know what? We do eventually get it back. And as you can see, our indicator lights are on over here, which means we now have more than two double chests full of stuff which means our indicator light system here is working as these chests fill up, the lights will turn on. Everything here, I think, is now good. It gets a stamp of approval. So we can move on to something else. So we will be moving on to our building block storage. Now, the first thing we need to do here is the first thing we do everywhere. We need to readdress our chests. Have a stray? Do have a stray. Ow. Now I am going to be changing up the layout of the chest just slightly. This top chest right here is going to be sideways. Meanwhile, the bottom five chests, the ones that we're going to draw items from, are going to be laid out like normal. So that's what our column of chests is going to look like. The reason why the top chest is sideways is because for our bulk item sorter back here, we're feeding two types of items into this first uh, column of chests, right? So what we're going to want to do so items don't get caught up in the hoppers is we're going to have both those hoppers facing into this chest. That way we get two sets of items going in there and those will feed from that chest down into these ones where we can draw the items from. So that should solve the chest problem or the items getting locked in hoppers problem that we were having. Uh, but this entire column is not going to be bulk sorted. In fact, these bottom two chests right here are going to be multi-item sorted. So we're gonna have our bulk sorting up here and multi-item sorted items down here. Now we're only gonna focus on the bulk storage today, but I do have a plan on how we're going to do the multi-item sorted stuff. 
but we'll discuss that when the time actually comes to do it. Now, as far as how we're gonna lay out our storage room here, this first column of the wood section, this is going to remain oak because I do use a lot of oak. So in the top chest and our bulk storage chest, we'll store our oak logs and probably oak planks as well. In the multi-item sorted stuff, it'll be all the stuff we can make out of that wood type. The same applies to spruce because I use a lot of spruce as well. Uh, but as far as our other wood types go, for instance, dark oak, don't use a ton of it. Birch, don't use a ton of it. So we can combine these into a single column and the same thing applies to our acacia and jungle. While we're up here, I suppose I should probably get the inputs to our multi-item sorted chests in place. The actual multi-item sorting system is going to be located here underground, but we're going to feed items through a water stream to each of the multi-item sorted chests in each column, and then... Ow. That's embarrassing. Let's pretend that didn't happen. So as I was saying, multi-item sorted items will be brought up here into this hopper. The reason why they're going into this hopper is because I want to create a safety system. And that safety system is going to basically consist of indicator lights because I like my indicator lights. And all I really need to do to get this safety system up here is to be able to put a comparator where I want to put a comparator. So let's just go up here and I will put my comparator reading from this hopper. So basically, once items back up into this hopper, that's going to light up our indicator lights here and let me know I need to address this issue. Now, hopefully we don't see these indicator lights come on because multi-item sorted stuff is typically going to be the stuff that we create for a specific purpose for a specific build. And we are going to use it in that build and not have it go into the storage system. Um, but you know what, it's there just in case. Now. We are going to want to cap this off because we're going to have items brought up here through a bubble elevator. We don't want them shooting out all over the place. Something like that should work and that's basically what our input's going to look like. Now while a lot of these columns are going to be a combination of bulk and multi-item sorting, some are just going to be multi-item sorted. For instance over here, flowers and dyes, wools, uh, terracottas, concrete, stuff like that. We're going to place our indicator lights at the tops of these columns, letting us know if the chests are running out of space. And that's how a lot of the above ground storage is going to be. The same thing applies to over here at our redstone section. Uh, over here at the landscaping section, we're going to have some columns that are just bulk sorted items that we don't need indicator lights for. Same thing applies to our nether section over here. We'll have some bulk sorted columns of chests. We'll have some multi item sorted columns of chests. And we'll have some columns of chests that are a combination of the two. So, moving forward, we will need to kind of redo our redstone a little bit here. We'll need to replace these sea lanterns with our jack-o'-lanterns, which are a full block, which will pass our signal down. We'll need to readdress which items are going into which bulk storage module. We will need to replace all these droppers with composters, because I believe that is better for lag, right? And we will also address our indicator lights up here because I don't really need to know where in the storage system items are. I just need to know that they're in there, that they're getting put away. And if these lamps could be more aesthetically pleasing while giving me that indication, all the better, right? So what I'm thinking is that we wire these up the same way we wired up the indicator lights at the top of the non-stackable storage where we basically, you know, sense when items in the system and then we just have the lamps go off in sequence uh, round and round the entire perimeter of the roof here. I think that would look much better. I mean, that's the plan anyway. That is the plan. So at this point, let's go ahead and call the drone on over here, put on a little bit of music and make it happen.
Welcome back, everybody. At this point, we've got all of the redstone in for at least the bulk item sorting section of the above ground portion of our storage system. Uh, we also have some oxidization occurring or weathering occurring as of now. So we'll go ahead and lock these in and we could probably strip this down a little bit to right there. Yeah. Or actually, we could probably just let the whole thing weather and then just uh, honeycomb it afterwards. That is probably a better idea, so that way I can get it how I want it. Uh, but yeah, off subject, off subject. Uh, we do have a lot of the redstone done now. For the above ground section, anyway. So now it is time to test it. I have a combination of stackable items and non-stackable items in each of these three shulker boxes, and everything does have a place in our storage system with the exception of this stack of diamonds right here. So what we should see is everything get put away with the exception of that stack of diamonds, which will pick up over there at the very end of the nether section of our storage system. So at this point, Let's let the testing begin. We'll go ahead and start loading up these items into the storage system and we'll just see what actually ends up where. Hopefully everything goes where it's supposed to. Uh, there is a chance that I overlook some stuff because there are some changes I just thought to make. Uh, but you can see that all our stackable items are now flowing through the stackable section of our storage system. The building blocks are getting put away in this area. Meanwhile, our non-building block stuff, say our redstone stuff, should be making its way over into this section of our storage system. And it's starting to filter through now. So at this point, we shouldn't see any rocks coming through here. We shouldn't see any wood coming through here. We shouldn't see any redstone coming through here. We got prismarine. We got grass. That's wonderful. The grass is going to make its way over into the next section of our storage system, the landscaping section. See, the diamond's coming through now, too. And I got some netherrack. I didn't, I didn't want netherrack. Um, we'll put this away somewhere else. Uh, but we now have all of the grass and stuff getting sorted out, the dirt, all that stuff. And what's left, the prismarine, will now make its way into the prismarine and underwater section of our storage system, which is right down here by the dock. So once that makes its way, you'll start seeing these indicator lights light up. Wonderful. So after this, the only thing left should be the diamonds and the netherrack, which will continue on to the next section. And apparently some spruce, like some strip spruce, which does not have a place in the storage system. Uh, so that's fine that it's passing through there. Uh, that's going to be a multi-item sorted item. But as far as what we should see coming up through here, we should see that strip spruce. We should see diamonds and we should see our netherrack. And there go our diamonds. There goes some netherrack. Everything looks like it's passing through here just fine. We have filtered everything out successfully, or so it seems as of right now. But we are going to hang out and just make sure that is actually the case and make sure everything is as it should be. No, we got some netherrack in there. We're not supposed to have netherrack in there. Netherrack should have got put away. But I do think I know why the netherrack ended up here. It's because uh, I forgot to add hoppers on the end before the netherrack filter, so it should have passed through. Hello? More diamonds. I put more diamonds in than this. Please? Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so I'll need to add another hopper on the ends of, or at the beginning of each of these, just to make sure everything gets put away where it should be. Um, we ran into this same problem at our raid farm not too long ago, but as long as we see 64 diamonds in here, I'm pretty happy with the progress we made for the day. And we got 64 diamonds. Wonderful. Okay, good, good. We're at a good place right now. I like it. So we made some pretty good progress on the storage system, but there is much more to come. That is where we're going to have to call it for today, though. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, please be sure to hit that little thumbs up button. That would mean a whole lot to me. And if you want to see more of Wolfinia, please remember to subscribe. But as always, I just want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I deeply appreciate it. And until next time, I am Portobello Jello, and I will see you guys later.